so I've been doing a lot of gate work on Dawn and uh, I also want to continue her bending and flexing um, exercises. Now the main problem I'm having with Dawn, and this is even when going to a bigger bed, and this is what a lot of people tend to do is go to a bigger bed, but I was kind of conflicted because, you know, I had been riding her in a snaffle for so long, uh, D-ring, and I had just not been able to get her to flex at the pole. So I would get her to do this in her exercises, but then when it came to riding, she just would not do it. And even here, she doesn't get super, super soft. So just to kind of go over some of the things that I did with her before regarding bending and flexing, I'll go through each of them once again now, just, just like once. Um, and then when we get to another part, um, I will stay on that because it's what she needs. Now, before I do that, I want to say that I came back down to a snaffle bit. It's a snaffle bit with a very short shank. It's not a wonder bit. It's just a jointed bit with a very short shank. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, and I've seen people have really terrible arguments over this point. There's no such thing as a shanked snaffle. If it's a snaffle, it doesn't have a shank, okay? And, uh, you know, and there can be straight bar, like mullen mouth snaffles because they have an O ring. And, if it has any kind of shank at all, it is a curve, whether it's jointed or whether it's straight. Well, that may be true in acceptable terms today, but when I grew up, okay, there was a short shanked snaffle. And it, there was a long shanked snaffle, longer than this. And it was not a tom thumb. And so this is not a tom thumb. Now, when I bought this at the store, it's just a simple jointed bit with about a three inch shank on it. And you know what it said on the label? It said short shank snaffle. So that's what I've got her in. And the reason that I went ahead and put her in a slightly shanked bit for these exercises is I do believe that she's going to end up riding best in the chain bit with a shank, okay? But when I come back to do these flexing and bending exercises, I'm gonna do them in a smaller shank. The reason I'm going with the shank instead of just the snaffle is I want her to start understanding the cue that when she feels pressure on the pole, that I want her pole to give. Now, I would love to be able to teach her to just give to the bit with the plain snaffle, but once she gets going, she just does not, you know. I, I know that she was ridden before in a chain bit, and I, you know, uh, I, I just don't know. Some, somebody never brought her head in. They were not at the stage. And so she just didn't have the experience. And so she was ridden a lot, lot, lot with nose out. And so uh, that's what she thinks she's supposed to do. So anyway, um, my firm belief is not to teach them to yield to the pole because of a bigger bit, but to teach them to yield to the bit because of what they feel. But in this case, I want her to also yield her pole when she feels the pressure right up here. And an O-ring and a D-ring will, will not teach that. They're all about a soft mouth. And I'm kind of in a correction mode right now. I, it's not like I'm in a baby mode. So my belief is that lateral flexion, which she's not even uh, perfect at, Okay, she's not super soft. As much as I've done it, she's not super soft. And you can see her moving here. 
so I'm a firm believer that lateral flexion is what leads to vertical. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And I believe that by making this move, now she shouldn't be walking around, but if you are laterally flexing, okay, and they walk around, you just keep trying until they stand still and then give on that side. Now, I'm also going to get her feet back because she's way better on one side of her mouth than the other, and there may be some, got something going on in the teeth. So she doesn't tend to want to respond as well over here. There she goes. But she does it, you know, and it's like she knows what she's supposed to do, but she resists and then tries to walk out of it. And then after a couple seconds there, she'll give to it. So she's been a very, very difficult horse. She should have taken only about a week of doing lateral exercises like that to get super, super soft. And it just didn't happen. And I've done it with other horses. I'm doing it with my Colts. I'm doing it with the filly. Um, doing it with Spice, the two-year-old. I do it with Stormy. I do, I've done it with Dolly. I did it with Sunny. Sunny was a little harder. And again, she was an older horse that had always been you know, ridden in a bigger bit, but she, she did yield at the pole. She just wasn't happy about lateral flexion. But anyway, you know, when you can teach lateral flexion, okay, you can get them yielding laterally like this. Then you take that other hand and bring it around to your thigh without letting up on the rein here and they have only one place to go and that's into vertical flexion to come off the bit a little bit now she's on the bit and that's not necessarily a bad thing because you know we are going to train to be on the bit but she is pretty soft right now and she's holding that vertical so i think if i go through these same exercises that I did in the O-ring snaffle, in this very short shanked snaffle, I think she will finally get the message. So she's, she's laterally flexing right now, okay? And as I hold this in place, you know, at a reasonable place and give her nowhere to go, move my hand down and then bring this hand around to my thigh. She only has one place to go to get away from that, that pressure, and that's to flex her pole. And you can see right now we have a pretty decent, we've got a vertical nose and this decent little curvature going on right here. here. Now I've been able to get her to bring her nose down to about a 45, but not get any break right in here. And that's what I'm looking for as her next step. She's got to break at the pole. And I know this, everybody's telling me this, and I know this, but I'm telling you, she's, this should not even be this hard right here. She just has a very hard time understanding that I just want her to, you know, just tuck her chin a little bit and get soft right there. Now she's pushing. and there she got soft and when they get soft you release it so that's the lateral and vertical flexion but I showed some turns you know where I did high turns like this and I also showed some hind quarters where I yielded the hind quarters like this and the drawing to a stop where you whoa come to a stop with one hand, okay? And that kind of stays out of their mouth. So yield the hind quarters, and then step into a turn where your leg is on the inside because your goal was not to turn them, but to get them to bend their body. And all the while, when you do these turns, you're pulling your hand to your hip, pushing with your calf on the inside, and getting a nice turn. So then, 
you can be walking along and you can put all that together a hind quarter yield then step forward with forward motion into a turn all the while bringing your hand to your hip getting them to give to the bit and then you can transition into walk trot gait canter whatever you want so i showed her flexing whoa her cruise control her hindquarters yielding her bending in that's the inside bend um, but I don't think I spent too much time on the serpentines and I think that's going to be the key because the serpentines will be what really gets her head and I, I'm going to go ahead okay and I'm going to bring that head way down and I'm going to really round out at the back, but I'm going to bring the head way down. Because why? Lateral flexion is the key to vertical. And the more I pull in the serpentine down like that, the more she's going to drop that head. It's just going to be a natural occurrence. And so instead of just flexing, like one flex, two flex, you know, as a flexing exercise, and then the vertical flexing as in a left flex, give her nowhere to go, pull it to my thigh, and see how she fights it to a vertical flex, but th she's doing better. Instead, I'm going to put all that together, just like I did the, the hindquarters yield, the inside turn, and the transition into gate. I'm going to put this all together with a left flex, right flex. But the problem is, well, it's not a problem. The good thing is, is I'm not going to have to um, convince her to vertically flex because what's gonna happen is her neck here, which over time has just become stiff, all right, from the way she's ridden and the way of going that she's, including myself, have allowed her to have. Uh, sh what she needs is to become soft to the rein, okay, left and right, but she also needs to become soft to the cues which is the, the mouth and the pole. And remember, that's why I've got the short shank in her, so that she'll get a mouth signal and a pole signal. And what will happen is as I serpentine left and I serpentine right, it'll be just like the action that I did of, you know, just like the action of a left yield and then a right to my thigh and it forces her to bend at the pole if she wants to get away from the bit but this is going to be going on so fast it's going to drop her head okay this is going to be the move that's going to really drop the head but she's also going to become more responsive to that left to that right to that left to that right and then i will also be you know, continuing to do vertical exercises, but that left and right flexing is going to be what loosens up the muscles in here that need to be loosened up so that she can relax by bending at the pole, okay? And she's going to get really flexible in here, and she's going to get really relaxed because I'm going to really work her, okay? And she's going to get tired. And as she gets tired, she's going to drop her head, okay? And she's going to find that there's comfort in yielding. So we're going to just do serpentine. See that head coming down already? It really has nowhere to go. Because if I keep my hand low, and I keep pulling her around, that head's going to come down. There we go. All right, there we go. Now I'm just pulling to the hip, to the hip and releasing. Okay, and now 
now I'm just going to do this all over the arena. I wanted to do the first few ones, but I'm going to spend probably a good 10 to 15 minutes. See that head coming down? So I'm going to do this exercise. Really, I've uh, not done enough of this. Head go down, head go down. Well, not yet. There it goes. There it goes. And in between, in between the sides, when you serpentine, she can't just stick her nose out. She's got to yield to the pole. There, you see that pole bending? See it? Pole is bending, and I believe that this exercise right here is what's going to be the key to her giving me that flexion at the pole that I've been looking for. If it doesn't work, I'll be first to come back to y'all and say, you know what, it didn't work. Look at that head down and pole bend. Okay. with it. She's either going to fight it or she's going to get out of it by flexing. The way out of it is to flex. Okay, so off with the camera and now I'm just going to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to have the days that I work her gait and then I'm going to have the days that I